Okay. Um, I'm, I'm hoping that you are well prepared for the next topic. Um, so I, I will try uh, my best to be on time since I am between you and the food. But okay, let's start about um, new opportunities of for electronic biogenesis and. Uh, uh, I will give a very small introduction and, of course, tell you a bit about what the heck is electronic biogenesis because maybe some of you don't have it at the top of your fingers. You will need to switch your slides. Oh, ah. it's a trick. How do I switch the slides? Like this? Yes. Okay, good. And so this doesn't work. Okay, so oh, okay, so um, so a, a small intro, as I said, small introduction. Then we will go to what the heck is uh, really the process of electrogenesis, and then I will try to give you three examples I like uh, very briefly. Uh, so the great success of the Higgs boson, its discovery uh, and subsequent study of its properties at LHC has provided the first. Of the in the breaking, and it offers a powerful tool for the exploration of fundamental questions in particle physics. For example, biogenesis and matter inflation. Of course, I will connect, I will uh, concentrate on biogenesis today. Uh, so, what is encoded in the Higgs potential? What determines the value of the mass parameter and the quartic coupling? In the standard model, we put this minus by hand so that we have electrosymmetry breaking. Uh, is there an explanation to the apparent stability of the Higgs potential? If, you know, if we go up to 10 to 12 or so, then we get into trouble with the scalar model. Uh, is it a part of a richer scalar potential? And I think that for LHC, the smoking down of possible electroenvirogenesis would be to find other scalars. Uh, that would be my preferred option, uh, rather than CP derivation, although I don't want to just encourage you at all. Uh, and if so, what is the dynamics of the electronic phase transition? And these things here uh, will be uh, very connected to the Higgs uh, being um, the agent for biogenesis. So the Higgs boson, there is a lot to understand. These are things we do know. These are things we are starting to learn, as we heard today. And this can shed light on understanding the Higgs potential and the electronic phase transition. And I will go back to tell you how, how these things play into biogenesis. And of course, there are important things like do the Higgs couplings conserve flavor and CP? Uh, what about exotic uh, or invisible Higgs decays? I will go into that. And of course, behind all this is what the heck is behind the electronic symmetry breaking mechanism? Relative breaking, compositeness, and all these will play a role in trying to explain the electronic phase transition, uh, sorry, biogenesis and the electronic phase transition. So we know very well that our uh, universe is asymmetric. And we get this number from uh, looking at our understanding of abundance of primordial elements together with uh, predictions from Big Bang Ecosynthesis and CMB. We get this value. And the question is what's generating the smaller surviving antivirus asymmetry, an initial condition, or what's generating the generation of the new mass? Uh, we already heard from Andrea, the starting from the CPT conserving theory, the necessary Sahara's conditions of variogenesis are baryon or lepton number violation. I will go into that. Of course, if the universe is symmetric, you need to violate something to get something. Uh, C and CP violation, because both you need to violate at this, together, uh, at the same, both independently, sorry. Uh, because that's what allows you to treat baryon and antivariants differently and remove antimatter. And then uh, you would need out of equilibrium, uh, out of thermal equilibrium processes. And in that sense, is that once you need something to generate something, you have to shut off the inverse process. Otherwise, you will have all that you generate. So, all these three requirements are fulfilled in the standard model. But these conditions are necessary, but not sufficient to produce the cell symmetry. And that's what I will try to tell you. I keep changing the answer. Okay, so uh, quantum field theory 101. Uh, I won't go into that, but I will tell you that uh, baryon number violation uh, occurs in the standard model through anomalous processes. Uh, and uh, in, in reality, in gauge theories, one finds that 
violation of classical preserved symmetries are due to the quantization of the, effect of the field theory. And uh, what you can do, your calculation, uh, is quantum field theory three, but, but 101, but um, the chiral weak interactions, the so S2F interactions, uh, are gauge, are, are, are gauge uh, interactions. And so to preserve the gauge symmetry, which is a mass, this, at the same, uh, uh, this gives you as a result the non conservation of baryon and lepton number. And it gives you the non conservation in this way of this kind. So the, the violation of baryon and lepton number, that I will show in a second how it goes, is actually at the same level. So B minus L is conserved, but B plus L is violated because the two, car the two, the two uh, currents here are the same. And this is what is here is nothing more but what appears in the instanton action. And the instanton is like the semi classical configuration that connects by tunneling two vacuums in field space of different uh, baryon number. Okay, so this is so if this is different from zero, so this, this, this is a connection, then I can go from uh, one, then I can violate baryon and lepton number, I would write it like that. I can go through tunneling from one vacuum. To another vacuum or to another vacuum. So, which means that they are in the standard model, anomalous process violate both a lepton number, and as I said, they violate B plus L because they violate both, but they preserve B minus L. And this is going to be very important because it's at the core of the electronic biogenesis. And besides the sphalerons of the channeling, there is another object that is this sphaleron that is a static configuration given at the uh, top here, which is the middle point in the instant tunneling. And the height of this barrier, this ES valerum, is proportional to the vacuum expectation value of the Higgs at the given temperature, okay? And it's what separates vacuum with different value numbers, okay? So this valerum configuration uh, and its relation with the vacuum expectation value of the Higgs is what is going to be the answer for the variance, yes or not. So, um, uh, what do we do? We say at zero temperature, if you look what happened in the standard model, baryon number violating processes to these sphalerone uh, processes are exponentially suppressed, and, and you can compute, and this, this value here is 10 to the minus 120, so you can't forget about that. Uh, at very high temperatures, it's like if you think about the barrier I was showing, you know, the temperature is so high that you can go from one to another without even seeing the barrier that you had before. Instead, if you have some final temperature, and this is the one that we are going to be interested in, there will be Boltzmann suppression. And this final temperature, as I will tell you now, is will be the, the temperature related to the temperature of the electronic phase transition. Okay? So basically, this, uh, this uh, uh, ratio of value number violation is going to be uh, uh, Boltzmann suppressed by this sphaleron uh, energy, the height of the, of the barrier. And remember that I told you the sphaleron energy is proportional to the vacuum expectation value of the heat at the temperature when this turns on. Okay, basically that's what happens. So uh, we are going to, you know, up to now, we, we have not uh, been very explicit, but now let's try to think about baryon number generation at the electronic phase transition. So what, what this means is I'm going to assume that there's no other source, you can think about other sources, but this is not what we discussed today, uh, where uh, any time before the electronic transition that here I'm kind of identifying with the uh, critical temperature, we're going to that, baryon and electron number are both zero. So there's nothing there. I'm going to generate everything at the moment that the Higgs turns on. Okay, and this is my Higgs. Higgs on, Higgs off. Uh, these are the bubbles of uh, real vacuum uh, that start to expand in the phase vacuum, false vacuum. And here is what we have. We define this critical temperature as the potential energy where the false vacuum is equal to the uh, vacuum where we finally live in today, that is here. Okay, so basically when, when these two are equal is when the energy inside the bubble minus the surface tension is equal to the energy outside where the heat is off. Okay, and of course when we are at this critical temperature we are going to use and you will see that we say everything in terms of critical temperature because we are looking at the vacuum structure as, and it's much more easy than to computing uh, what happens a bit below this critical temperature that I will go uh, in a second. So the bubbles expand at near the speed of light, 
and the process near the wall are highly out of equilibrium. And you can think about this first order of phase transition as you know, a bubbling, uh, water uh, bubbling, and then the, the, the bubbles escape from the water and go into the uh, real vacuum. And the whole thing turns a real vacuum. The temperature goes in the direction. So, uh, we define first order phase transition. Now I want to uh, tell you how really uh, this occurs uh, um, at the electroweak phase transition. Again, as I told you, varying and electron number are equal to zero at any temperature um, larger than this critical temperature, than this temperature of the bubble formation. So what happens is I told you that uh, we need, uh, we heard <laughs> right now, that we need CP violation. And of course, uh, with the CP violation, I will show how we do Value number generation at the electroweak transition. So what happens is that the particles, so this is my bubble wall, okay, and these are particles that come from the fake vacuum into the real vacuum, five different from zero, so the Higgs has a value expectation value, or the Higgs has not a value expectation value. Fake vacuum, false vacuum, real vacuum. So the particles flow uh, into this expanding bubble wall, and because they are ECP violation, implies that the wall exerts different forces on particles and antiparticles. Okay? Because of that, we are able to generate what we call a chiral asymmetry. So that means that uh, um, left-handed, I, I put the top quark because uh, the Higgs, of course, in the standard model calculates mainly to the top quark, and so that would be the best candidate. Uh, to generate this value asymmetry, we are just in the standard model, okay? Where uh, the standard model doesn't have Yukawa violating interactions at, at, at uh, three level. So, uh, so the, the point is that we can, if you look here, this, that is the number of left handed minus the number of anti left handed top quarks, is equal to minus the number of right handed top quarks minus the number of anti right handed top quarks. So this, because we have ECP violation, this is different from zero because these cross sections are different. So as I said, the, 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 the wall exerts different forces on particles and antiparticles. So I generate a chiral asymmetry. I generate this different from zero and this different from zero. But of course, if I sum these two, I did not generate any real value number yet. I only generate a chiral asymmetry. So a difference between, um, um, so basically an asymmetry that, that that, that, that is related to this CP violating effect. And so this means that I'm going to generate, in, in this case, for example, there would be, this is a minus sign, there would be at the, at the bubble wall before the, the spirons, I have to tell you that the spirons are very active, correct? Because they're proportional to the, to, 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 to the they, are, they are very active uh, in, the, in, in the false vacuum, but they become, uh, uh, Shut off at, at the, at after the after the going through the bubble wall. So the spiralons are here, and the spiralons, as I told you before, has the property to violate B plus L, but conserving B minus L. Okay, and this is very important. Okay, they can they, they violate B plus L, but they they conserve B minus L. So what the spiralons do? They make quarks go into anti leptons, and they make anti quarks go into leptons, okay? And so this, because baryon number is one third and, and lepton number is one per lepton, that's what I have nine here or three here. So B minus L is equal to zero in this process, and B minus L is equal to zero in this process. But because there was a CPU asymmetry, I have less quarks than antiquarks in this area. And because I have less quarks than antiquarks, this process is slower than this process. And because that occurs, then I can generate an actual baryon asymmetry. And the way that happens is because this, this process of making quarks go into antileptons and antiquarks going into leptons is done by the spirons here, okay? But the spirons are uh, um, SU2 beasts. So the spirons only see left-handed particles, and that's the key point. Okay, but the spirons here are taking quarks into antileptons, antiquarks into leptons, but they can only touch left-handed particles, and they cannot touch right-handed particles. They don't see right-handed particles. Okay, and so what happens is that outside the bubble wall, the electroweak spirals allow a fraction f of the chiral asymmetry 
in quarks to be shared with the leptons, and so they generate a variant asymmetry. And they generate the variant asymmetry, as I said, because they are less of this than of this, and so they generate the variant asymmetry. Okay? If I let the variants keep going, the time would be infinite, then at the end, even if the process is lower, it will, it will end to be the same. Okay? So it's important that this process, that is one is slower than the other, it shuts off at some moment. So the number of variants, Carlitos, can you shut up? <laughs> the number of variants minus the number of antivariants is equal to the number of <coughs> right handed minus the number of anti right handed plus the number of left handed minus the number of anti left handed, but then the variance depleted a fraction f. And this fraction f is what I'm going to generate as my variance. Of course, this is, this is back of the end of calculation, then you have to do your calculation. But the idea is is this clear or you have questions? Because yeah. I, I would love that you understand this. But is Sarah on? You are not supposed to ask questions. Okay, now something about how to charge. Take two and I'm not going to go into that. Yes, please. If you want, we discuss it later because I want everybody to understand what you do. I confess that the idea of how the spider on stem left hand is into the bottom is not clear to me. Sorry? Why the, the spider on do this transition? Uh, this one? Yeah. yeah. Why they do it on your left? Particularly spider on uh, Oh, because the spider were the guys, like I told you before. <coughs> okay. It's kind of top of the potential. The, Echo. the, the spider were these guys. Yes. The spider ones are these guys, okay? So basically, I need to have. And the process is not super easy, but basically the spalerons can uh, is because they they can violate the plus L because this is violated and this is the instant configuration and the spalerons is is a, a, a close relative of this. It's the static point of this of this uh, of this barrier and the uh, the, uh, the instances are tunneling from one back into the other. Okay, and the the. You can think about the spalerons as, as the middle point in the instant on tunnel. Okay? So the spalerons, you need maybe to believe me, that they can violate B plus L brutally, but every time they but they can do that by preserving B minus L. And technically they appear on the frontier? In the they appear on the frontier of the bubbles? Yes, they are living outside of the bubbles. They are effective outside of the bubbles. Why can't they get inside? I think they here. Why can't you have value propagation with the vacuum expectation values not zero? Yeah. Why, do, why not do it inside? Yeah, I will I will show that in a second. Okay. Well, or in two seconds. If you are not happy, you ask me. Okay. The two seconds are long. That is exactly because of the CP asymmetry. But then you would need to explain the CP asymmetry. Yeah, the CP asymmetry means that this is different from zero. You, you, yeah, I, I'm not. A, I'm telling you that because of CP violation, matter and antimatter forces of matter and antimatter are different. At, at the wall. No, we want to explain by another violation. Yes. Okay. The problem is I cannot generate, I have B equal to N equal zero. And, and I can't, how do I generate? So the value, the spirals are generating this asymmetry, this value asymmetry. Because of CP violation, I generate a CP asymmetry, which means that particles and antiparticles behave differently. And this is this, this, this. Question. Okay, this is just an assumption. No, this yes. is not an assumption. Well, if you, if you don't believe that you have CP violation, yeah, I need CP violation. <laughs> <laughs> that is an assumption, yes. <laughs> it's the sacred of, the sacred of uh, second principle. You need C and CP violation. But I'm trying to explain how the process works. But because, you know, you need C and CP violation, so your spiral <laughs> do nothing about that. You, you need the Higgs, the Higgs really uh, interacting with the top one, okay, uh, has some CP violating interactions. Okay, I call it the Kamigo Kobayashi Masao. And those CP interactions, CP violating interactions of the Higgs with the top one, 
uh, are the ones that are generating this. Yes. So it is an existing standard model. It's not that something. It's not, it, it won't be enough, but it exists. This can happen. This happens in the standard model. Okay, so it's not an assumption. This happens. Right. What I'm telling you is that I'm not putting by your number by hand as I put in other theories. I use the CPU allocation I have, and I use the scalars that can by maybe percent, but not by conserve in myself to generate the values at the moment of the decision. Okay, is that better? Too many questions, but please don't take your time for me. <laughs> <laughs> no, go ahead. I'll just ask. This is the only question I'm sorry about. It, but, uh, uh, our variants, two variants exist before 5.0. Variants exist, yes. So, so the variants are in the, the quarks. Well, the quarks are massive. So, yeah, right? so, yeah. But this is the amount of variants and anti so the problem and is the quarks are less than that. Yeah. And, and so you are able to form variants with less than quarks. No, the quarks have varying in number themselves. Yeah. Quarks have varying in number themselves. Quarks are one third by the number. Yeah. yeah. So these are this year are quarks. So now the flame quarks. Yeah. Yeah. There are quarks that still don't have a max. Yes. So you don't need them to form quarks. Uh, not yet, no, no. no. but I'm counting by I'm not counting values, I'm counting here value number. Each quark was one third of value number. I didn't get the four quarks before. Yeah, no, you, you are, we're talking about value number, not about values, but we, in a jargon, we talk about values and antivirus. Yes, thank you, sorry for that confusion. Uh, okay, so if now we are, oh no. Okay. <laughs> I will kill you tomorrow when you talk. Uh, I will be mean. Okay. Um, sorry, this is just fun. So, uh, okay, so you bear with me because I, I, if one thing I can explain to you is the electronic biogenesis process, please. So, so we did this, and if you believe me that I generate some biogenesis asymmetry this way, Okay, I didn't do any calculation with you, but this, in principle, could all happen in the standard model. I would have some net barium number asymmetries generated this way. And, and in fact, as much barium number asymmetry, I will have lepton number asymmetry, because B minus L is equal zero, and I start to B equal L equal zero. But it doesn't matter, I'm trying to explain the barium asymmetry. Okay? And the key point is, salarons don't see the right-handed, so they do nothing to these guys, they, however, deplete the barium asymmetry in the left-handed part, okay? And we started with barium conservation, but we had CP violation. That's all what I wanted to keep in your mind. Yes? Good. So, uh, so we created the barium asymmetry. This is a step number one. And many models, as the ones that we were talking about with effective field theories, can generate the barium asymmetry in different ways. You need CP violation for biogenesis, for electronic biogenesis, you need the spirals, and you need, um, um, sorry, and, and you need CP violation. Okay? So now, now you're happy, you have your barium asymmetry, but as I said, you need out of equilibrium processes. Why do you need out of equilibrium processes? Because if I leave these aspirants to be active forever, they, you know, although one, the way I generate what I see is because one process is slower than the other, if I leave things go to infinity, they will finally kill everything. Okay? So what I need to do is electrolysis for a short period, the electrolyphirons work to generate the desired biome asymmetry, and they need to shut off quickly to prevent the washout. Okay? And this again, I won't do the calculation for you here. It's not a difficult calculation, it's the evolution of the barium number density that is here to the entropy factor. That's not important. So if I have at any temperature about the critical that the barium asymmetry, this is MV minus MV bar in some ways, is equal to zero, uh, whatever is the way I'm thinking that I'm generating this barium asymmetry, in this case are the uh, so then uh, I, I tell you now that I was very happy and at some critical temperature I generate the right value symmetry I want to generate in the universe. Then I, I have a, this uh, uh, 
I have to compare how is the, the spiral rate, uh, the violation of value number, so the, the violation of value number that is proportional, this Boltzmann suppressed spiral rate here with the uh, expansion of the universe. And I consider how is the spiral, uh, the, the value number violation rate with respect to the uh, Hubble expansion. Uh, I can derive this formula, and of course, if I want today, this is t equals zero, to have the same number uh, of value that I generated at t critical, then I need this exponential here to be very close to one, so that it doesn't deplete it, whatever I generate. Okay? And in order for this guy, that has a double exponential uh, with minuses here, to be uh, of order one, I need this here to be much lower than one, and in order to be this to be much lower than one, I can deduce, because I told you that the spiral uh, energy is proportional to B or t, B at the t critical temperature, I and mean, then I need B T critical over T critical to be larger of order one. And B T critical over T critical larger of order one is what we define as a strong first order of transition. Okay? So, you, so there are two conditions. First, enough CP violation plus our spirals to create the, the value number, number one. Number two, a strong first order phase transition, a electronic uh, phase transition, so that I keep whatever I share. And usually when you see papers, they do one or the other, including itself, because it's very difficult to do all together. But you have to do all together to see that your model is electronic by the end is more. Yes? Uh, so, my condition for keeping whatever I created is a strong first order phase transition that transfers, uh, transforms in BT critical over T critical larger than one. So, to preserve the value of symmetry, the mass of strong first order electronic phase transition. There is a little subtlety here that maybe I just mentioned, but I told you that the bubble, the T critical is when the potential inside the bubble plus the self extension is equal to the potential outside of the bubble. But when that happens, is when the bubbles fall. But you want the bubbles to expand and take over the whole, <coughs> whole universe, and this is the nucleation process. And that temperature is a tiny little bit smaller than T critical in general. In some cases, it could just not, don't exist. But in reality, what you care about is the nucleation temperature. And what you care about is that you do the transition from the false vacuum to the real vacuum. And there is a condition that I will ask you, I will tell you about if you ask me, that defines the, the nucleation temperature and is this bounce action that uh, is basically the, the, uh, the transition amplitude from one vacuum to the other. Um, um, in a given space, uh, and you have to minimize uh, that uh, path, and that's very hard to compute. So this is very hard to compute, and so people usually compute this instead of computing D at Tn over Tn larger than 1. Okay? Because it's larger than you. In, more, in most cases, it's very similar. In some cases, it's totally wrong to do that. Is true? <laughs> I'm glad that you agree. Okay, so we are, so when I say we are going to look at the vacuum structure, means we are going to do a look at this T critical, and where my vacuum structure is such that the false vacuum and the real vacuum have the same energy. Okay? And when I tell you that I want to do things really properly, I have to look at the nucleation temperature. Some case, in some cases, it's good just to do that one thing. So in the standard model, and I will go a bit faster here, but you can ask me, all these conditions, as I told you, are, are um, the second conditions that we feel. We have the spirals and the monos process. We have CP violation because there is CP violation in the quark uh, CKM mixing uh, matrix. And it's impressive that, you know, you only have CP violation because you have three generations. So it's impressive that nature decided to have three generations. However, it doesn't seem that that was helpful to do electronic biogenesis, uh, as I will say, say, tell you. And then we have the electronic phase transition, so it could be a non-equilibrium process. However, we were so lucky to measure the Higgs mass, but the Higgs mass is too heavy. Okay? The Higgs mass is too heavy, and in reality, if you look, this is a lattice simulation, 
if the Higgs mass would have been 75 should be or below, then I would have had a strong first order phase transition in the standard model. But because the Higgs is 125 should be, then there is no way one can, no matter how I create the, the body mass symmetry, I will not be able to keep it today in the standard model because the Higgs is too heavy. Okay? So that's, and I will show this in a second. Paris, are you unhappy or are you abandoning already? You were asking something, but I don't know. The statistical mechanics, the, the, the transitions, first order, I remember, depending on if, if the first derivative of yes. the energy is discontinuous. And the, 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 so the, where is, why is the energy discontinuous? Now here, here, the, 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 this is quite involved, and basically the potential that I showed you can be connected with the free energy that is the logarithm of the partition function. So the first, thing, so you can connect with that, but it's not a straightforward. It's not a two-sentence answer. But but it's great. But basically, you have a first order phase transition because suddenly you jump. Okay, I showed you before that you, you, you basically have a, a barrier, and so you either tunnel or, or, or someone jump from one vacuum to the other. Instead, if it were a second order first transition, you smoothly will turn your close vacuum into the real vacuum itself. And this is your, your idea of first derivative or second derivative of the free energy. So uh, if we, I, I, I can tell you that more, more carefully, but basically symmetric phase broken first, first order phase transition in the standard model, but we are here where there is no first order phase transition. And on top of that, uh, the CP violation in the CKM mass matrix is not appearing well because this force that creates CP violation uh, is depending on, on a complex contribution of the top core mass which in the standard model appear at six or seven loop level. And this is the, the Yarrow's environment that is extremely small. Okay, so it's not enough, the, the effect of CP value. So the standard model doesn't work, at least for that. So the basic question is, what was the mechanism that triggered electronic symmetry breaking in the standard model? So I, I have to go back and ask myself the questions again, correct? I want to understand now, if I go beyond the standard model, new physics, and in particular, as I will tell you, new scalars, that is one of the things that is exciting. So what are these new scalars doing to me uh, or to the electron phase transition? So one thing is, what triggered the electron symmetry rate? In the standard model, I remind you, we put this mass parameter negative by hand, and that's when we have electron symmetry rate. In supersymmetry, for example, it appears by naturally by quantum corrections. Okay, but in the standard model, we put it by hand. Does this mechanism involve an expanded heat sector? Okay, with other scalars, new forces, new fermions, new sources of CP violation. So that's a question that LHC can answer to many of those. Okay, uh, and then was the resulting phase transition strongly first order? Uh, the first transition could be one phase or multiple phase transition. And of course, was there an electron phase transition at all in the model I'm looking at? So one, one I can answer these questions, I would be able to understand if electron biogenesis is a viable explanation of the observable asymmetry in our universe in a given new physics model. Yeah, five, five minutes? more. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, I will show you a couple of things. <laughs> so there, theories have nothing better to do than think about the electronic biogenesis and other things. And so these are some of the scenarios, and I intended to show you. I have two slides for each of them, so I won't be able to show all of them. But uh, uh, the uh, one, the simplest case you can do, I will go into that because I want you to search for my scalar. Uh, <laughs> so one, the simplest one is a singlet extension, a singlet scalar extension of the standard model. Okay, uh, as Ben mentioned, two standard models. The other one is uh, the NMSSM. If you ask, I will answer. If not, I will skip. So I will try to say two words about this and two words. So this is 
a single scalar to enhance the strong of the first of the phase transition. So to be sure I keep what I, I make. And this is a model that I love because it has dark CP violation. And dark CP violation means CP violation occurs in another sector. And this is very important because electric dipole moments are really very constrained in CP violation. So let me just show two slides of each, I promise. Um, Oh, I forgot about that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I did. Okay, let me just say in words. I don't want. So you, you asked uh, Paris, you were asking how how you compute, or maybe you were not asking, but you should have. <laughs> <laughs> how you compute the T over T? Okay, how you compute? Well, you need to you I, I show you the little cartoon of the potential, but this is a three-level potential. Of course, when we are at finite temperature, you have to compute the finite temperature potential, and then you have to look, uh, compute one loop corrections. And I will not go into anything of this, but the one loop temperature potential, approximately, this is an approximation, has a temperature <coughs> square piece and a temperature linear piece that has uh, a cubic term. And this creates something that is like this, a cubic term, because this is the mass of whatever field, let's say, um, the gauge bosons of the standard model, the W and the Z, uh, in the field of the Higgs boson, they will give a cubic term at final temperature for the Higgs potential. This gives me uh, a barrier, this gives me a barrier here, and this barrier is what makes possible a first order, a, a first order phase transition. If it is a strong enough or not, is to be considered. Okay, so basically, this is in the standard model. This is what is called symmetry restoration because for sufficiently high temperatures, this, tem this uh, mass parameter becomes positive and therefore the uh, potential lives here. This is at high temperatures. Okay, When you lower the temperature, this term becomes negative and you break the symmetry. And then this term here is, is giving you a, a, a value. Okay? And if you do all the song and dance, which I won't tell you at the moment, you get that dt critical over t critical is proportional to this uh, coefficient of the cubic term over the quartic term. That's why we are so interested that we mesh, you measure this one. Okay? So, if in the standard model, I told you that the Higgs should have been below 75 GB, but this is doing very serious lattice calculation. Doing a back of the envelope calculation, as I tell you now, I look at this, this is my standard model, W mass and C mass, so I know how to compute this very well, and I know the Higgs mass, so I know this lambda very well, and I do this computation, and to have B over T critical larger than 1, implies the Higgs should have been below 40. If you do things more precisely, you get the 75. But in any case, what I'm trying to say is that this B T critical over T, cri over T critical comes from doing a very careful calculation at higher order loops, renormalization, basic resumation, and all the song and dance of whatever is your potential. In the standard model would be something like this, column and binder excluded, it has to put it. In another models, you will have other pieces there. Okay? So, in the singlet case, and I will not go through that, uh, okay. Okay, in this, this is my, sing, my singlet case. So in the singlet, no, this is not the singlet case. Something went wrong there. Oh God, this is very bad. It's not projecting what I put. Okay, great. The PDF is, uh, you, it was open wrongly, I think. So this is the potential. So now I, I put the most simple extension. And the most simple extension of the potential is just one singlet. That has its own, this is the standard model. Now I put the singlet and I put an interaction, a, a mixing term or quartic mixing term between the singlet and the scalar. I'm not going to go into anything of these, that is other types of, of, of models. I will look at the model where you can basically have what you call a spontaneous situ breaking. This is a model that is interesting because it means that this singlet can have a vacuum expectation value besides the Higgs. These both can have that expectation value. And this is interesting if you think that you are, this, this singlet is the Higgs of a dark sector that acquires a vacuum expectation value when you break a symmetry, a gauge symmetry in the dark sector. 
and it's interesting for them now. Okay? But since I have a glitch in my PDF, uh, uh, so I will not go into everything, but the point is that in this model, now Vt over T critical is given by this expression, where this is more or less the standard model value, but this lambda to H is given by this. And here I have what would be almost a standard model value minus this mixing term that I was showing you before between the, quar the quartic coupling. This is the quartic coupling between the Higgs, Higgs square, S square. Okay? So as you see, I am putting, because this is, this is a positive quantity, I am making this lambda tilde smaller than what would be otherwise in the standard model. And if this is a smaller, the over T critical becomes large. An interesting thing here is you can express this in terms of these are the parameters in the, in the potential, and these are uh, the physical parameters, the mass of the Higgs, the value of the Higgs, the ratio of the two Tuttle's um, potential values. And this sine theta is really the mixing between the Higgs and the singlet. That is one to one related to this lambda. Okay. So the interesting thing here is that first of all, you see that a light scalar and a large mixing are the best recipe to get a strong for solid transition. Okay. But the mixing is bounded from Higgs precision and will be bounded more. So there is an interesting tension there that uh, the branching ratio of the Higgs, in, first of all, I need this guy to be quite light. And this is just to show that I do have the energy critical larger than one if this lambda T is sufficiently small. This is the standard model value, so it's sufficiently small. So I need the singlet to be really below, below half of the Higgs mass if you do the calculation. And uh, in order to, to enhance this term here, and I need the sine theta to be sufficiently large, but sine theta is, is constrained by, by you guys. So the point is that the branching ratio uh, of the Higgs to SS uh, has a lower bound because I need this to be high, uh, high okay? And from the other hand, is uh, quite, um, quite uh, constrained by precision machines. And this is a, 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 the reason that exotic Higgs decays are a potent probe of singlet extensions with viable electronic virogenesis. And for this audience, let me show this plot here. This is branching, this is high Lumi LHC. This is the branching ratio of these Higgs into exotics, into this singlet. And I'm assuming this is coming from all the analysis that we were seeing. That's what I was asking of, of you know, Higgs going to single, single, going to for this and for neurons and the gamma gamma, whatever you want. And I didn't put the lines, but all these lines here, or these lines here, are coming from the projections of high lumi of the searches we saw today or yesterday. Okay, that this all CM, these are all CMS and Atlas lines. Okay. This region here is the region of parameter space in branching ratio versus the mass of the singlet that is compatible with a strong electronic phase order phase transition. Okay. And this bound here is the projection for Higgs presotics in high lumen. So this is from, from a global fit, you will exclude all this part. So obviously, I will very much expect that you will do better than you are doing now here because I'm I trust you well, but this is would be probing interest. Obviously, to probe the whole vision, you will need something like a Higgs factory. Uh, but uh, but this is going to be able to discover this this uh, symbol. Okay, so please look for that symbol. And then I guess um, I will not go. Well, this is for you to ask me. You can do a lot of nice things with Higgs three linear couplings in the same model or in gravitational waves. This is NMSSM, but I won't tell you anything. Let me just finish with this one thing. Uh, so I told you, so these are the, the, the thing I said, these light singlets in exotic Higgs decay will constrain the strength of the phase transition of the simplest, simplest extension of the standard model for electronic biogenesis. Then there is another thing I want to implant in your mind and has to go with long lead particles at LHC at the end of the day, but it's based in a quite uh, uh, interesting model that has to do with putting that CP violation in the dark sector. And this is we were thinking that uh, new physics models 
uh, require, uh, so this is the EDM, and this is the value of the theta CP. So the values we are measuring of this value, and most new physics models of electronic biogenesis require that this sign, this theta CP, which is sine theta CP, is larger than 10 to the minus 3, so much smaller than what we were discussing before the talk, okay? But they, and this is a, an example of a type 2 to Pythagorean model. So, you, but then you are in trouble with EDMs, okay? But if you have dark CP in the dark sector, then these EDMs occur at three or higher order groups, and you are safe. And the question is, what is the model? And this is only my last one before the. Uh, so, what is the model? And we, we work quite a lot, and we are working more now on this model that has a dark sector, where you have dark matter and CP violation. This is our sector. There is a Higgs and a singlet. This is a, a complex singlet. And, and then there are different things that happen, but in the Higgs portal is the one that serves the CP violation that I explained to you before that was very important. The CP violation is coming really from the dark sector and also is the one that is responsible for a strong source of the phase transition. So serves the CP violation into the dark sector is the Higgs that makes CP violation happen in the dark sector. And then the set prime uh, is the one that transfers CP violation from the dark sector to the standard model sector. Okay? And if you look at the uh, what you can do, there is a lot of things of the model, of course, but interesting is these searches, these are long-lived searches where you're, uh, you are producing a Higgs through fusion, whatever, then the Higgs decays to these uh, scalars, okay? Uh, which are in, in this now in this mass range, so this is you don't need the scalars to be so light. And these scalars then through uh, loop effects uh, uh, decay into set primes, and you can look for set primes into leptons. Okay, and these are actually simulations we have done of uh, um, scalars in the region of 50 to 200 GV that you can look at high beam LHC with um, uh, displaced vertex because they are a bit long, but with regular uh, touches. <laughs> okay, so finalizing, I would say, uh, I hope I convince you at least a little bit that the electrohydrogenesis is really a cute um, method um, to explain the violent-to-violent symmetry, mechanism to explain the violent -violent symmetry. It requires a strongly forsorted electrohydrogenesis transition and additional CP violation in the standard model. Okay. It, may be, uh, it, it may come with very interesting collider signatures, as I tried to show at least a couple, new scalars, uh, new set primes, and scalars that came uh, long um, The Other thing in the MSSN is looking for a heavy Higgs going to a, a standard model Higgs plus a, 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 a single like Higgs, and you can have also interesting CP violation in the NSSM that I didn't show there. It's one with Carlos, but I didn't show it because you see the So, uh, <laughs> so uh, and then I didn't have the time, but gravitational well signatures that are in the town can be interesting probes of the nature of the phase transition and can be at the reach of planet instruments. And I tried to show you in uh, two the force uh, some of the things, but I hope you you got convinced of that and then you can get more convinced about the rest. We have just two questions and we can continue about the show. <laughs> yes, please. Uh, how would one see this this, this uh, scalar? Would it be stable or this this scalar, the, the one shown in the simple case, in this in this there are cases where the C2C is preserved, and this will shall be the case in this case. And I think we have work on that. If it is not the, the, C, the C2 uh, symmetric case, like the example I show you, or any actually, basically the, the scalar inherits the back to the mixing, the Higgs, the branching ratios of the standard model And so you can look, the scalar is 
In the case I show you, the scalar cuff is below the kids mask, cuff of the kids mask, so you will not for a case of that in the case. But uh, in, in other cases, you can actually um, look uh, for the scalar going into kids and so changing, for example, the assessments. So it, it, it really depends, uh, even in the singlet, in the single case, the C2 symmetry has three options, and depending on the options, you look for the same. But it's, it's not cases, you can look in many ways. So if it's the case, um, um, like Higgs production, and this. Yes. You don't like anything. It can be as light as Ingini, or as heavy as 400. 400 or 500 sheep. It has to have a reasonable cup in the heat at some level. So, and, and so that's why in one model that's more constrained because the cutting in the heat, the quartic mixing, but the cutting is directly related to the mixing of the two ion states, and therefore you have uh, precision measurements from the heat. In other models that are uh, explicitly to the rating, for example, there are more parameters, and so you have more freedom, and so you have, you have a very heavy. You can have a 500 GB guy that is not constrained so much by the mix in the kids, and you can still produce. Okay. Yeah. This is, uh, I only show one case here. Okay. You started at the beginning with the public, and you said that this process is with free. The barium has to be free on the border of the public, but the public expands with the speed of light, right? So, how does he? The sparrows are very fast. No. <laughs> <laughs> the sparrows are very fast. Actually, yes, everything happens, and in fact, a lot of what you do, that's what is very hard, honestly, to do this with um, effective computing, because you need really to be careful to compute the diffusion equations at the barrel wall, okay? Uh, because um, you know, this is, you have a source of CD variation and you have to solve the diffusion equation for your value asymmetry with the source of CD, CD variation as a source of the diffusion equation. Once you solve it, then, um, then you can see basically if you are able to generate sufficient value asymmetry. And it all depends on the source of CD variation. And the source of CD variation depends a lot on the model. For example, in the standard model, uh, yes, you have a source of the evaluation, but it's 20 minus 20, and that's nothing. Uh, so, so, basically, the bubbles are expanding at the speed of light, but everything happens at the wall, at the wall. Because once, you, once the bubbles take over, and, and you go from the, uh, all your universe becomes the real, the real vacuum, let us say, but the real vacuum we are here today, the spirals are already shut off and they can be anything. So, yes, it's, it's extremely, um, it's a extremely out of the equilibrium process, and there are a lot of things to understand. And I'm trying to understand now, uh, maybe with with quantum information, how to compute uh, the, the 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 thermal evolution at the bubble world, because it's very hard to do those computations, and there are a lot of other approximations. Although people have been working on that for decades, it's not an easy topic, I would say. Neither it is if you try to make it like you do electrogenesis, you may be happy that you do it, you may never ever be able to prove it. Okay. So,